Welcome to December, the tenth month of the old Roman calendar. In case you're wondering, up until the reign of Julius Caesar, the new year started in March, with the planting of crops. January and February didn't even exist until about 700 BC. For December, highlights include a moon cover-up, a gathering of the planets, celestial fireworks, and a Christmas star. The cover-up I mentioned earlier involves the moon and that most lovely of all star clusters, the Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters. In the early evening hours of December the 3rd, towards the southeastern horizon, the nearly full moon passes in front of these stars on its eastward trek across the sky. Most people know that the moon and the stars move from east to west during the night, but did you know that the moon also travels eastward relative to the stars? Now this motion is so slow, it will take the moon a couple of hours to travel across the width of the Pleiades. Legend has it that Copernicus, the astronomer who claimed the sun was the center of our solar system, never saw the planet Mercury. Well, you wouldn't want to make the same mistake now, would you? So in early December, you'll get your chance to outdo Copernicus. Dress warmly before going outside, and look towards the southeast before sunrise, when the sky is still relatively dark and you'll be able to see this elusive planet. As a bonus for dragging yourself out of a warm bed, you'll also see Jupiter and Mars. As a matter of fact, in the morning of December the 10th, the three planets are very close together and make a lovely sight in binoculars or a small telescope. Just make sure that the sun isn't up yet if you use optical aid. Even a brief glimpse of sunlight through unprotected optical equipment can damage your eyes don't risk it. On the night of December 13th, the Geminid meteor shower puts on its annual fireworks display. The Geminid meteor shower is one of the two best annual meteor showers. This year, the best time to look is between 8.30 p.m. on the night of December 13th until the moon rises at around 2 a.m. on December 14th. As many as 100 meteors per hour might be visible. No equipment is needed. Just use your eyes and look in the direction of the constellation Gemini, which this time of year is above the eastern horizon. Many Geminids appear yellowish in hue, and bright fireballs are common. Unlike the other meteor showers, which are caused by the trail of debris left behind by comets, the Geminids are caused by the debris left behind by an asteroid. The asteroid is called Phaethon and was discovered over 150 years ago. Some astronomers think that Phaethon is the remnant of a long dead comet. But don't worry about all that. Just bundle up, go out, and see how many of these shooting stars you can bag. Towards the middle of the month, look low in the southwest, right after sunset. The bright evening star is our sister planet Venus. Its brilliance will make it difficult to mistake for just an ordinary star. Venus is the second brightest object in our night skies. Oh, by the way, can you guess which is the brightest? And it's quite often mistaken for a UFO. Venus can also make an appearance in the pre-dawn skies as the morning star. But for the next six months or so, it will remain an evening attraction. As a bonus, the slender crescent of the moon will join Venus in the evenings of December the 21st to December the 23rd. And of course, the moon is the brightest object in our night skies. Because Venus' orbit is closer to the sun than the Earth's, it can show phases just like the moon. Right now, Venus looks like a nearly full moon when seen through a small telescope. But by next July, it will resemble a thin crescent moon. So let's hope that our December skies will remain clear to allow us to add these attractions to our observing log. Until next time then, clear skies and good observing.